you enjoyed my tutorials on boat animation. I might do a bit more later on fine tuning the settings, but right now I want to do a tutorial on simulating the water around the boat using the guided ocean layer and Karma XP. It's not for beginners, but it's not particularly hard either, but I'm not going to go over in detail all the stuff that's been covered by other people a hundred times. So if you feel there's anything missing, please leave a comment in the comment section. Um, the working file is available on Patreon. Uh, please leave a like if you've enjoyed the video and subscribe if you want to see more stuff. I have many ideas for vehicle based animation tutorials coming down the road. So we've got our plausible boat animation. Um, now we need to drop it into an ocean, hook it all up and get it rendering and looking nice. With foam and splashes and waves and everything. Because they're easy. Let me just quickly go through what's required. So this is our full comp, all the elements together there. And they comprise the big ocean. So that's the kind of procedural ocean. That's not simmed. That just goes out to the horizon. Uh, and that's just basically a displacement map. That's all handled by the ocean procedural in the Solaris. And you've got the bit around the boat, which you sim that using a flip sim and physics and all that stuff. And the area around the boat is crucial in terms of keeping the whole thing responsive. If you have a huge area around the boat, it will take ages to sim. You'll have huge file sizes uh, and it'll all be very slow. But there's a sweet spot, obviously. You can see the area that I've simmed is biased towards the rear of the boat and that's because that's where stuff goes on. The weight comes out of the back. Very little stuff goes on in front of the boat. You might get a few splashes that come off the bows. The further, how far back you take it depends on the framing and so forth, but you want it to go back as far as the wake becomes kind of petered out and, and diminished because if the weight carries on all the way over here then you'll get a hard line between the wake and the rest of the ocean here. So this bit is simmed, this bit is displaced, there's a soft grade between the simmed bit and the displaced bit. Let me show you the displacement, oops, there you go, that's it, um, that's it displaced. So you've got the simmed area here, the displaced area here, uh, and it's nice and smooth transition between the two. Underneath that we have the fog layer, that gives us, you can see the fog under the water here, it really makes it look nice. And then um, this is our uh, map pass, which we use to composite at the end between the big ocean out here and the bit we've seamed and displaced in the middle. At the end, um, on top of all that, we've got the white water. And there's two lots of white water. Um, there's one that's applied quite quickly to the big ocean, and then there's the splash specific white water around here which is generated after the water has been generated as a separate solver and everything. Okay, uh, this is what you do. I'm going to turn this from the... Uh, well, I'm going to make it render. So, um, just quickly go through what we've got from our previous tutorials. We've got the sea surface, which uh, we don't actually need for this, but I like it in there because it's a it's the right size and it's a you know up to, quickly updates and you can see your ocean. Um, so I'm going to leave that in there. Uh, uh, we don't need that for the rendering. Uh, and then we've got our camera, which is linked to the middle of the boat. Um, our ocean surface and ocean interior. That's what we set up from before from the ocean shelf, large ocean. That's just a click there, set up the shaders in Solaris. And then we've got our boat animation that we did before. Now I've taken away the other types of boat from the project file. So we've just got the lifeboat and its control shape coming through. So that's the control shape, that's the lifeboat. And first thing I'm going to do is go down to here and First thing I'm going to do is make uh, some colliders for the ocean. So this boat render, um, 
is just about, I'm gonna take the, take the tube off as well for now, for the mast, because we don't need that, and that gets in the way. So, uh, we've got boat render, so we need a boat collider, okay, and so let me just copy that over, so that's a collider, and uh, if we go to there, we see we've got the version that's not moved at all, turn off everything else. This is our collider. I don't want any water slopping over the top, so I'm going to extrude the top faces out a long way so the water won't ever get on the top. So, uh, first thing I'll do is make a group. And I want primitives. Take that off. Keep my normals pointing up. down until we just get the faces we want and then we want to poly extrude bring that up that's on group one bring that up say three meters high and inset quite a bit as well say two meters that's good so if the water slops up the side of that it won't go over there it'll just come out and around and that'll probably look okay i will label that boat collider surface uh, and we've got the trail on there so the trail there is to provide a velocity to make sure all the points on that object have got velocity on and that can be useful when it comes to setting up the collider the collider likes that it, it helps the water to splash correctly away from the hull if a velocity attribute is, is on there. Can do. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but we'll leave it on there for now. And the other thing I want is, uh, just, just to, in the interest of thoroughness, I want to do a volume collider as well. So we'll go BDB from polygons. We go and I'll set the resolution to so, uh, five, so that's pretty accurate. Put that over there, boat collider volume. So we've got both of those. Uh, maybe go. It's always a bit confusing when you talk about resolutions because you know when you say increase the resolution you expect more of stuff but if I increase this number here 0.025 you actually get less voxels so when I say increase the resolution I mean reduce the voxel size okay so uh, that's that fixed what's the next thing next thing produce colliders uh, next thing is to fix the path because uh, path I've got at the moment is for demonstration purposes and I don't really like it. For animation purposes so I'm going to make it smaller and uh, a little bit less wavy. Having done that, I now have to redo the, uh, the motion of the boat because at the moment that's cached out. the path and now uses the path that we just created as you can see the ocean has stopped working so I'll just it's just a buggy kind of thing just go to there back again and now that works fine 
So the uh, large ocean shelf tool here throws down these two nodes. This is the surface with all the lovely shaders and so forth, and this is the fog for the interior. So um, just for now, I'm gonna I'm going to rename that large ocean and large ocean interior. Uh, and I'm going to colour that one blue and this one I'm going to colour red and the reason I'm going to colour that red is because this contains the root oops, let's go back and let's just turn some stuff off oh, I need that this contains the spectrum files that we're interested in. These are the ones that drive the whole thing. The boat simulation, the large ocean and the small sind ocean. So these these have got to be fed into everything that we do. Okay. So um, inside the large ocean surface we've got plain old grid that is just flat and that's what's rendered but it's displaced at rendering time. Uh, and then some points are scattered on the surface which determine which of these spectrums appear at which point on the grid which enables you to have an ocean that doesn't repeat so you can look at it from a long way away and there's no annoying repetition on it uh, and then these are merged together and that is saved out to here use in the Houdini ocean procedural in the stage context. Okay, and this is the foam for the ocean, we'll do that a bit later. Uh, and this is just a proxy to have a look at roughly what's going on. So um, for now um, I'm just going to make a note of something here. I'm going to make a note of this. The resolution exponent is 9. And it's nine on the other one, so we want that to be the same on both of those. So I'm going to copy parameter and paste relative reference there. Okay, and now um, there's going to be a few of these spectrum files floating around, and I don't want any ambiguity, so I am going to save this spectrum out to. resolution exponent which is the detail factor of the ocean okay so I'm going to save that uh, and then move to the stage context so uh, we're going to go into karma and there it is that is the procedural that is thrown down by the shelf tool and it's got it all built in here to produce a lovely displaced and textured ocean. So this is the spectrum file that we're after. And you can't see anything at the moment, or you can see a vague green tint um, because it, it's not displaced yet. We've just got this Houdini Ocean procedural inside. And this has got um, connections to shaders. You can put whatever shaders you like in there, as long as they're calm compatible. Um, but it's also got a chunk of code inside it that displaces the ocean at rendering time uh, and you can't get to that but it's there okay and it, it relies on this file to do it so uh, let's get a few more things going before we can see what's in there so we need a dome light so if I click that on make it live you see now we've got um, it's still flat but we've got you can see the ocean a bit better we've got a flat ocean Okay, so uh, next thing we need is a camera. So this is just importing the camera from the main scene. There we go. And then if 
I set this to view through that camera. Uh, next thing we need is a Carmo render settings. It goes in there and we need to point that to the camera that is up here. So we just do that. There we go. And then we need a Houdini preview procedural. And we put that in there. And once we put that in, you can see that we've got the rudiments of the ocean. And then that's for file output later on. Okay, so we've got the rudiments of the ocean, but it doesn't look great. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is to uh, up the viewport quality on the Houdini Ocean Procedural, put that up to one. That takes a while to generate the waves, the files, what they call dicing. Uh, and it does it every single time you change everything, anything. So really you only want that on one one for now uh, and you can see that it's actually if you look around here it's actually a little bit blocky and nasty uh, and the reason for that is is the resolution of the spectrum file so if you put that spectrum file up to 10 that will fix that uh, and you'll get more detail but it will take a bit longer to generate as well you see um, but we'll leave it like that for now okay so that's the Houdini large ocean set up and ready to 